Hey guys, we're going back to Advent of Decay. Today we're taking a look at one of the sort of upscaled Legion Builder figures, so to speak. So there are a few figures that are meant for troop building, but aren't the quote-unquote Legion Builders. They have all the requisite paint that a normal figure has. And today we're taking a look at the Shadow Elf Warrior, one that I'm very much interested in. I've already taken a look at one Shadow Elf, and I was pretty much blown away. So this this one is definitely one I'm, I'm keen to get into. We've got him there in the standard packaging. You can see this guy in the window. No bio for this guy, just some product shots on the side. And then we've got that same artwork and write up that we've seen throughout. So let's pull them out and take a look. All right, guys, here he is out of the package, our Shadow Elf Warrior. So this is one of the more deluxe, sort of, in a way, style Legion Builder figures because he's got all the same paint we expect, but he's not a named character. He is just a generic trooper that has a little bit more ornate armor, which I'm perfectly happy with. We are, of course, going to start with articulation. It's going to be the same kind of stuff you've seen before, but if you're new, we're going to run through it real quick. So as is the norm for this line, you can rotate the head, he goes up, he goes down, bobble side to side, arms go out, they swivel all the way around. We have got a swivel at the elbow as well as a 90 degree hinge. We have got swivel at the gauntlet, swivel at the wrists, and then we've got hinge as well. Since he's on that slimmer male buck, he has an upper diaphragm swivel. Not really much in the way of back and forth or anything, mostly just twist. And then we do have a waist twist as well. Legs go out, they kick forward, they kick back. You've got a cut in there as well. We have got a single jointed knee with rotation. We have got rotation, rocker, and hinge down at the ankle. So it's par for the course as far as this line goes. This newer, slimmer body I think works really well. I'm very much fond of it and the articulation it brings to the table. Definitely a bit of a change up from some of the bigger figures, which just adds a little bit more uh, flair to the line in some ways. You can get this guy to do a little bit more than some of the other figures. Now, of course, my main interest for this figure isn't in how he moves, but how he looks. This figure, just like the Malachi Cinderhorn figure, the other Shadow Elf figure I've looked at so far, share a very distinct color scheme in this line, and that's the dark blue, the kind of royal blue, the metallic blue, and then blacks and coppers, and that really, really, really does it for me. And I particularly like this body as well. And we've seen this body before, and it crops up a few times in Advent of Decay, but I've specifically reviewed this figure almost in its entirety in the Grisha the Slitherer review because they share the majority of their parts are exactly the same, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's just uh, something to point out. I really do like this armor. I think it's nicely done. It gives a very, you know, leather scale mail type of look and feel because there's a lot of over overlapping plates. You've got the scale uh, loincloth here. You've got lots of buckles all over the body, lots of rivets, and all of it is, of course, you know, sculpted, so it's lifted texture, and then all of that has paint applied to it, and it all really pops against each other. I'm a big fan of this inlaid metallic blue paint that runs through the armor. It's on the chain mail. You can see it down here on the shin guards. It runs up the thighs, and he's got it on his humongous belt buckle there. But what's really making this figure pop is all of these little copper accents that are all over the figure. All the little rivets each have a little dot, a little dollop of copper paint on it, which really, really just makes everything kind of stand out. The belt buckle, of course, everything here is all painted with that copper color. And it just works really well to make this guy kind of look shadowy, but also a little kind of ostentatious at the same time. He looks a little ornate, almost a little too bright to be a shadow elf, but it really works. I think it goes well with the motif of a shadow elf. He's dark, but at the same time, not, you know, just full stealth. And then in just in general, I really dig the armor design here. And of course, you know, it's four horsemen. So we know that the sculpt is there. We know the quality is there. Paint is on point. I really don't have, I really don't have anything to gripe about with this figure. I liked the armor when I did the Grisha, the Slitherer review, and I really like the armor still. And I particularly love the color scheme that they use for the shadow elf. So it's kind of a win, win, win for me with this one. Now, of course, we have to briefly talk about this head sculpt. Uh, it's obviously of elven design, and I really like it. It looks very, very trooperish. It looks very much like something that the rank and file of the Shadow Elf army would wear. He's this humongous matte black pointed helmet with a lot of line work in there. There's a lot of design work in there, even though there is no paint on that. The face is obviously a dark blue. It very much matches the Malachi Cinderhorn figure. You've got those ears popping out of there with tons of little detail sculpted in there. And then my one of my always 
favorite aspects of elves when it comes to action figures is pupilless eyes. So you've just got those kind of blank white eyes staring at you. All the sculpt is there, paint is on point, no QC issues. It's just a good looking head sculpt. It very much fits in with the theme. You can't really ask for too much more. Now, as far as accessories goes for this guy, since it is a Legion Builder, Troop Builder, you know, generic warrior type of figure, he comes with an extra head to make him a little bit easier to differentiate on your shelf. You don't have just a hundred of the same standard face. You can swap him out for this helmeted head sculpt, which, frankly, I really, really like. It's going to be hard for me to decide which one I want to use, because I only have one of this guy, so I'm going to have to pick one. But we do have a really fantastic, very, very elven-looking helmet, matte black with a bunch of sculpted lines in there with that humongous, bright, metallic blue mohawk that runs down the head. And I really, really dig it with the uh, with the ears popping out, kind of a black void in that face mask, so you can't really see any facial features, which I really dig. We do have pauldrons for this guy. We've seen these a handful of times with other figures, but they're just done up in this guy's color scheme, the elven, the shadow elf color scheme with the black, and then we've got that metallic blue on the inlaid parts there, which just looks fantastic. And at this point, you know, I absolutely dig the color scheme there. As far as actual accessories, weapons and such, we do of course have all the back adapters. We've got the skirt, we've got the strap, all that good stuff. We have got one of the standard swords. This is the long sword, so we've got kind of a dark gray blade with a black hilt. So it keeps with kind of the, the shadow elf theme. We have got kind of a standard troop uh, shield here. We've seen this before, the wooden shield with the metal accents, of course, done up in the blue and copper and black color scheme. So, of course, very nicely done. Looks fantastic. Goes very well with this particular figure. It's a new one, so it's got a handle and not the old style clip. But the best accessory we've got here is this humongous axe. And we've seen this before, uh, Malachi Cinderhorn. The Shadow Elf King comes with this guy, only his is a different color. His is actually in that blue color scheme. This one is just more a generic uh, kind of accessory, kind of axe, just like you might expect. So silver blade, but with a black handle. It's the same sculpt that Malachi comes with, and I absolutely love this. This is such a fun, cool-looking weapon. It seems highly impractical, but it looks menacing and evil and dark, and it's exactly what I need when it comes to this figure. So yeah, this is another winner. I was already a fan of this body because like I said, I've already seen it before. I've already reviewed it. This is just a different color scheme. And frankly, I'm more of a fan of this color scheme. I really, really like the black and the blues and the copper. That color scheme really works for me. It pops, it's different. It's very striking against some of the other figures. And in general, I just like it. It's just, it's just appealing to me. So it works for me on many levels. This figure though is of course articulated, sculpted, painted in that same style, in that same quality that we come to expect expect from the horseman. You've got a lot of options here, extra head, tons of weapons, bunch of accessories, all the whole nine yards, everything you could want out of this figure is here. You know, if you're like me, you only have one of them, you've got options for this guy, but if you've got a handful of them, you can make a nice elf squad or troop and have them all look a little different and kind of play up with the whole troop builder aspect that they're going for with this guy. So it's a winner through and through, no matter how you play with this one. So that's going to do it for this look at the Mythic Legion's Advent of Decay Shadow Elf Warrior. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.